Hello, it's really great to be here. I'm really excited to be here. I'm going to read um, three bits from a four-part poem. It will be one, three, and four. Uh, this is live at Late Dilated Ilium. Your anus closes on my tracheotomy. Speak to me in a cluster of racked upper partials, a phlegmatic head. Trill to me, live in gut wall, acoustic baffles, stocking mask, anechoic black box mono, limp balloon in the open mouth. This is a concept I thought up, like the implantation dream of an inflatable cuff. Replace the urethra with the ear canal, and the ear canal with the urethra, binaural. My head fills with piss in your bowel. Incantation, swan song, the decimalization of perversion. Replace the gullet with the left tibia, and the left tibia with the small intestine, and the right tibia with the left lung, then the right lung with the skull, the skull with the retained endoclip, face clamp screwed on the bread bin, secreted into the rope trick of an angular cavern. Incinerate the redundant gullet. The eyeball is a tattered bolus with a retro-engineered prostate for a tear duct. Kaleidoscopic lawn sprinkler in a swim bladder tied to a rock. Speak to the rock tied to the object in the left tibia's rear view, tied to the replacement small intestine, tied to the root torn out of a wagging tongue, whilst the wrong tibia supplants the swim bladder, which supplants the rock, which supplants the gullet you incinerated, so all are mutually deceived. Watery grave. Speak to the smoke alarm in the aqualung, muted to a prophetic quack from the depths of the clinical waste bin, a clogged squawk superseded by the heart monitor approximating sonar in the abattoir of your heart monitor's least abstract electronic bleat, in the splayed neck of a scatting white ulcer, appropriating bebop in the stairwell of your heart monitor's ecstatic snort through a thick wad of matted hair, compressed to a black urinal cake in the plug hole of your heart monitor, squeaking splat, relentando, clock, prophylactic honk in chorus with the swinging drip. Speak to me in disco, <laughs> putting a halo on the star and then taking the star down, and then superimposing the star on the halo and fading the halo out, and then nudging the halo back in and guiding the star to extinction through a glistening chamber of denatured mood lighting above the waves, beneath the sea. And then just unplugging the star, summarily, and fucking slamming the plug for the halo back into the socket under the desperate lyric compulsion of an inner urge. An inner urge which you cannot understand and from which you shall never be free. And then you find that you want to arrest the halo's term and somehow contract the halo into the star on a hiding to everything chopped down to a speck. As long as you live, you will try to want something else to want to not arrest the halo's term, but to prolong it like a vestigial hubcap, shedding your luster like a dying star through the dimmer switch on your heart monitor squeak. Now speak to me in blasts of static from a gastromantic head, putting the star on the halo and taking the star down, and then reintroducing the halo, wheat yellow to centipod green star of bright wasabi on a pink plastic sheet rolled to a blowpipe. Drip poison in my ear and then drip poison in my nose, and then drip poison in my throat. And then make that drip noise by flicking your cheek, but make it in such a way that it implies an omnidirectional kind of non-specific insult in relation to something I've just said to a third party. Organ of domination, organ of perception, poppers. A ring of muscle around the reconstituted scorched gullet. A ring of muscle around the stoma reconceived as a negative bullseye. A ring of muscle with wings around the boned, unconstitutional weeping windpipe, which flutters like an archaeopteryx out beyond the distant mudflats spotted with otherworldly yellow worm casts as the star fades in and out again. Breathe it and in again. Breathe a word to me down the blowpipe to no one else divested of the star, stuck with the moon as the star fades in, displaced in a smooth transition by the dildo pink halo sucking its candy pacifier. Popsicle love. And out again. My stoma, and in again. My stoma closes on your tracheotomy. Replace the pancreas with three hearts, the hearts with the forebrain, the forebrain with the world, and the world with a pulsing ganglion the size of a horse head, gristle on the breath of God. 
Snuff the halo, watch the smoke curl into the vent. Prune the star, the anus chewing on its speculum. I can't open my mouth. Snorkel of triangulation, haggis of innerness. Passimur's speaking valve of the right to remain silent. Phantom limb of a split lip like a psychic veil hung over the real lips reducible hernia of liberty. Attention, the deficit, reparation. Counterweight of the conceptual perpetual paperweight of the circumspect ineffectual stapler of the unrecollectable perpetual G cramp of the ungovernable, the unelectable, the bosses and the birth dream of the sterile obturator. Cloud of pity, anvil of sorrow, heavy petting forever in the fictive treehouse. They put hickeys on each other's foreheads. Order, sinking feeling, Gethsemane. Video fluoroscopic swallowing study, the circular breathing of fools. Hold me tight, whole head vaginismus of the loving throat erupting in a flower of spittle out the gas mask. Suck poison from my throat. And then suck poison from my nose, and then suck poison from my ear. Make that suck noise, like when you suck your cheek, to produce a simulation of the suck noise accompanying the tearing away of saturated mesh in mechanical debridement. The patter of teeming necrotic feet. My thorax sings. Evil eye of the saturated mesh in a total Rorschach test of lyric abandon. Now open your mouth, swallow your tail, bypass the mouth, swap the ring for a nail and go for the throat. Three hearts, a liver, a forebrain in the world, chorate. It's glandular. I give up. I give up and replace any wet gauze dressings with dry, sterile gauze dressings in elimination of the fungibility button. Dissolve me in enzyme fetishism, whistling the orbis factor in transports of regression through black spit. You sensitise my auditory meters. Your teeth are all starred out. Your left eye pressed to the hyoid keyhole, your right eye in my mouth. His hunger was pulling at his testicles, his stocking mask of unalterable text, torn eardrum for a preambivalent dummy head's cryptic hipster monocle tick box retina manicist manacle, live at the zygote's head. A pub called that. The nomadic barnacle. The overdetermined leech. The exclusion zone. The teeming crater. Four pubs called those things. <laughs> It's last orders, and my face is your very best irreducible femoral hernia. My face is the best irreducible femoral hernia you'll ever have. My face is a synonym for heavy lifting. Face it. Several subtypes of femoral hernia have been described. Now in a circle around my face, they each break out, emerging from five defects in the containing wall. And I to each give a voice. Hesselbach, Velpo, Lorige, Chirrup in unison across the piazza of a triangular depression. Serafini and Callis and Cloquet coo back and wave hankies streaked with mascara and peritoneal fluid. The scene in sepia and neon slows to a one-act burlesque, oiled protrusions stripping in folded tripe. Meanwhile, I've become tiny, there in the dead centre of a colonnade, beset on all sides by mammoth inerrant sacks of roaring intra-abdominal viscous. With mounting persecutory anxiety, of an oral gnawing and engulfing character, I, and a smothering character, I edge slowly backward and become big, my normal size for my head inside you, which is too big, my face now beset on all sides by irregular warbling orbs shot through with marbled fat in strings, and in the actual defect of my mouth, a fabricated mesh plug. Blamange and offal through a lawn sprinkler in a swim bladder tied to a rock. Hesselbach, Loringer, Serafini, Callison and Cloquet and Velpo in five-part harmony. A raspberry of meat chirping the dawn chorus at quarter speed through a Leslie speaker in a birthing pool. Haul me through your defect to where I belong. Speak to me backwards down the pipe in a gobbling mania, reversing through billowing ribbed enclosures, the hot air between two stools. You turn around to see through me the marrow voted out to inflame the plucked corrosive jabber frozen in my mouth, stop 
flensed, evasive, bent, hack misappropriation of gut rot, floodlit by a trans-illuminated abdominal wall which pixelates the underage ulcers, missing eyes, in a bitten-off reverie of lingual lipase. Pollute me hard, give me your pancreatic mayonnaise, panopticon spun, amylase malaise, before it dries out phrase, stuck, secure wall, wiffle ball in manic fixity, horse flies in amber, faultless, unassimilable attribution truncated to a menu of ticks, at a table for one, in a bistro of doom, by the iron turnstile of catastrophic synergism, wearily retching into your open mouth, asleep on the job in a street of sautéed mesh. A, wide, a wild excess in eating flesh. Case law. Dips. Shrink-wrapped head, a synonym for stuffed crust. The neural face studded with commands, broken, a pin cushion of cauliflower regressed to a handbag, false lashes on a dead horse. You respawn on the island, the cot's curtains nailed down. I expect to respawn at the lobby spawn, at the outer edge of the same electrical desert of White Lake, on the roof of the hut shut out in stars. Instead, I spawn on my island that I died on, like a moth dispersed, with a face like a slip disc. Skull beautified in cosmic dogwood on electrolyzed water. Ethylene pours from the face of the upturned shower head, a perforated cauldron on a tripod in a ring of fumes blown by the wall to the fans. During the eighth of fifty star jumps, your skin slows to a crawl. Disaffiliated integument pressed in a raw deal against a bent wall bleached by Clacton Council. Curveball gag, live at the sphincter moralist's arms. Old banknotes pinned overhead. Calvary, meat feast. The shaved heart, cream epilated to a knuckle in the howling breast. Thoracic carpool. St. Lucy weeps. Passive smoking in an iron lung on the mouth's bypass. Silver spoon of bright foam evaporated to a dubious brulee on the runway under a fading star. Her eyes crackling like a bonfire of pea sticks. The frantic elision of formative patterns in a crapulent mock duvet stuck on a fraudulent mince doily. Solemn intonation of gnomic piffle. Milk tray. Fade in the halo. Now reverse it into a portmanteau conceptual spice rack. Three. To a trending marmoset, St. Lucy coos. Head down in the frozen irrigation ditch like a cheese football replaced by a stick man inverted. Her scoptophilia converted to a fantasy honeymoon cystitis after the incident and then displaced upwards during the course of treatment into an hysterical vestibular hyperacusis. Fireworks shoot from her mouth and nostrils, a constellation of broken systems in a halo of cordite. St. Lucy is uncontainable. Her objects burst into smoke and engulf the marmoset, already nothing more than a hanging clot become a leech in the mud of her skirts, in fury cast out and in terror reeled into her nose like a yo-yo on a string of snot. St. Lucy's containers are unreliable. Shit lids, misthreaded by a skeletal hand. You are the smoking, looming face that is hers pressed to the gaping mouth. Uncanny it leers horrible in an unlit hall of teeth, impervious to the flesh. The spirit writhes in the wiffle ball. Here a prototypically lidless, permeable form, identified with the analyst and the perforated eardrum of the subject, itself a somatoform expression of a part introjected, tripophobogenic, eyeless showerhead, howling urethral seduction into St. Lucy's paranoid infant face. And now link this with the mist issuing from the holes of her face. Tongue slung out like a swing ball from a haunted racket, clicking round the spiral back into the nose. St. Lucy's an unreliable container. Her face smokes like a chimney. Her face leaks like a sieve. Her face will swallow anything. Her face is a bowling ball, plugged by the thumbs of rebounding hands, bubblegum pink and spearmint green and blind as a melted colander. St. Lucy's face breaks out like a rash all over her head. The face of the wet nurse breaks into a cruel smile. I want to slam a kitchen knife into my fucking face. The judgments passed in this city are unjust. Her face doesn't hold water. Her face is a perfectly round inquisitor face, the marmoset panning for gold with a ski mask. Her face is a pure habitation, an open coil in passive transport. 
You question the function of the marmoset. Back off. Scent of pollen. From the depths of the poem rises a murmur of ascent. I'm out to get you and I, I know what I'm doing. The marmoset was unable to operate the sieve, even as a marmoset, and now it's a leech, panning nothing in a creek of bloody mucus. It just lies there, the future streaming from its muzzle. The marmoset is a hypercathected gremlin. It ignites the lake. It is my good self, shorn of conscience. As a leech, it's a prototypical vampiric succubus, live at the blastopore sequence, a binary mouth anus with its head up its ass, identified with an, an envious, undifferentiated, hermaphroditic early self. It is a living par object, and having a sucker at each end, it provides a focus for greedy, introjective impulses of a sadistic, draining character, and uniquely merges anality and orality by the suggestion of an actively sucking anus coupled with a biting, sucking mouth, the character of which applies equally to first and second stage orality, preambivalence torn across the swamp, searchlight on oil, burning grass, let the whole city be destroyed for this vile action. Equally, it can become a focus for impulses aimed at the evacuation of bad fantasy body contents through a masochistic, herudotherapeutic evacuation. St. Lucy. This is St. Lucy of Syracuse, not St. Lucy of Campana, who recruited, who recruited Victus Verus, formerly pulled by the world, knows that the mouth is a discontinuity, a void in the monad of the head. For now we discount the tongue. It must be sewn up like a vote, plugged like a drain, the marmoset peers from a burning drum, its tiny claws in its mouth disaffiliated. But her evacuative impulse is not served by the sealing of a hole. The mechanical suppression or impairment of organ function in itself, whether by the production of an hysteriform symptom, characteristic of organ neurosis, or by the self-administered surgical excision of the physical organ itself, characteristic of acute psychotic states, is not sufficient to affect a psychic parturition if the symbolic content of the fantasy itself is left unreflected. The sound of the skull buzzing. A white square projected on a lateral mass of scrolled sponge. Expanded cinema. The leech is a blind intubation. It slips through the posterior cellar or forum and into the interior, and you have the sudden sensation you are inside the leech. Muted sunlight through a colonnade of neuronal ganglia. A hole must be made. A distinct object must be lost. For her auto enucleation blocks out not what the eyes take in, but what they eject. A shield against the counter-terrorism of a penetrative libidinal echo. Like a child that imagines herself hidden when their eyes are closed, to escape the ravishing gaze, Lucy, you remove not the eyes of your persecutors, but your own. Blue mist pours from your tea strainer face and is blown by the fans to the wall. The leech lies on the corrid in a halo of mustard gas and voids its stomach into the wound. You have the marmoset's eyes. The half-transformed tail of the leech hangs on her cheek. A corolla of tactile hairs was trapped into the posterior brain, the devotion of union. St. Lucy is a full slate. The leech has 32 brains, a parody of a committee re-electing itself. Sticky filaments eject from the anus in self-defense. Doom. This self-immolation is not the typical Christoid reversal, it seems. In that indirect sense only, as an evacuation of an organ become dangerously intrusive in fantasy, as it a phallic aspect in the sense of the classical Oedipal symbol of castration. This is the last section four. A single submandibular gland alive in a dry skull. A compacted gallstone like a comet streaking a tail of snot. A single image of peptostreptococcus massing in the mouth of the urethra, keening through pink stain. Autotune. Two co-joined images of the pupillary constrictor contracting and dilating on natural in frantic alternation, superimposed on a looping gif of the wingtip in red filter as it skims the lake. Golgotha. Fuming in the crucible of verse, loping hagfish look up through a coulee of gristle and lustral saliva, the cuspidor of balladry. Expiate the visionary impulse to endoscopy. The ghost of a flea collar is my halo in your gut. 
On the lake, each wave replaced by a wave infinitesimally more abstract and yet more infinitesimally abstract. I and coverts diminishing grind in grey crepitus, angelic violet plates. And yet more and more infinitesimally redelineated in the black lines that hedge the shadow of the waves, drawn away through gunmetal tipex and unending exchange like the non-proverbial bad penny that never turns up. Zero stomia. The skull pan of a mountainous head. Now divide the marmoset. Soaring a ragged conceptual incision through the right clavicle, vertically down the column of the sternum and shearing off below the left lung at the diaphragm on the gravel in a rainbow of parietal traumata. Pin open the wound, the twist of the harried spirit, the rim of the nail in a hash of psychic cloud. Through a two inch speaker, synth harmonica and a motoric ride cymbal torn arseways over a fibrillated tone cluster of 12 octavists in staggered unison. It is to you they speak. The choir hawking radioactive phlegm at the hydra from your throat in a profusion of green spray through dry ice. The choir loft is on fire. The pissed on me if I was burning in your bowel, cantilevered back through a localised defect with a coffee stirrer. A blue flash, the hydra is on stage. And then you're on stage. A final rinse in a chlorinated wash. And then the Hydra is on stage again, howling a circumspect melodic contour, harmonised by each of the twelve heads, a half step apart, with the upper edge of the chord picked out an octave above head twelve by a mezzo. You didn't ask for this, but you hear it, first of all, fluting through plumes of ether and screw your face up hard into a pink ball. The marmoset's tiny jaws like an anglerfish backlit in sparkling mist clamp your hernia. A blue flash. And then you're on stage again, busking the continuo in a cantata for mixed chorus and sigmoid monkey vivolvus, patterned after a panpipe rend rendition of Kiss from a Rose by Seal. <laughs> the closing measures of a saltarello for wind chimes and flamethrower, you're moving up the queue, leaf fat, lungs and tail fully trimmed, and as you lop the final head from its neck, over your shoulder, slow you discern in paralysing terror the top third of the marmoset, retaining the head, the left arm, and the remainder of the ipsilateral flank of the torso to the limit of the upper abdomen, twist to a split vulture, emitting lilac steam on a patch of bare scrub under the patio heater. The hydra booed off. The curtain falls. The scalpel drops. The hagfish gasp. A senseless aria rings out on an ill wind, snared in a malrotating loop at the mesenteric attachment site. From the wings flops the marmoset onto the unlit stage. The shorn head of ragged stitching in looped subcuticular invagination lullaby. Anterior nozzle from the dissociated flesh array in modular disorientation maliciously recombined. Some visual disturbance, broken up for parts. Later, that mesenteric attachment site becomes my face in a sequence modelled on balloon modelling. In the encore, your bowel is beautiful. Jets hiss from the eyes, spinning in silly string, sightless tokens start out in althazin. This is the scherzo, in gingival groove, a parody of insanitary surgical conditions in the smoking hut of the blastopore sequence. The sight of the former mouth chatters in an ebb tide of gum recession, haphazardly redacted, twinkling glotto of pyrrhea in magnification on a salivary mount, a mouthful of smashed fairy lights. Teeth retracted bob and weave in waves, outsized, irrationally undersized, magnified, shoot out, shrunken, uselessly conflated, and on the verge of their irreversible divestment into literal teeth, winnowed to non identity under the harrow of metonymy. Corrupt stubs punch circular holes in a tiny face. A confetti of bones in a flaming waltzer off the hook in the observation tower. Chicken has no dark bone. The hydra wanders off stage into the mist, pruned by the hagfish to an elephantine slug. The quadriceps muscle of the hind leg convulses on the unlit stage. As your eyes adjust to the dim light, your footsteps echo in the silent auditorium. From the rafters fall disco gels like cataracts through dusty light telescopic ramp in a rock tied to a swimming float. Notice the low bass note doubled by a wavering piccolo. You are subject to an indefinable feeling of dread by the lake. Now write the anastomosis. The bottom two-thirds of the marmoset, retaining the 
legs, the tail, the right arm and the remainder of the lower abdomen rolls like a tongue in white dust, abandoned skins on a rotating dryer spinning from the wings, fucked in strobes by the lake in red mist from the car park under the floodlight into the pre-conscious by the heater. The kidneys suctioned out one frame before the interior of the rectum flings itself from the vent. Tie off the sutra. The right arm migrates over the warped stump of the pelvis like a skate's eye. Clamp down, keeping a lid on it. A cancelling bar of jelly. A hologram of the leech blazing on your skin graft. Some visual disturbance. The clamp is white hot. Superheated by the ectoplasm that drops from the ghost of the Hydra's floating twelfth head, streaming a baffling coliatura through a tail of snot. A new stereotaxi on the counter marmoset. A crossfade. You are inside. Hesselbach and the ornamental trill of his vibrating encroachment pressed on Velpo's baritone yelp through the mesenterium commune. The bite of Serafini's bitter croak through corkscrew mucosa. The whole thing flashes out in white. The score drops out. You wait. Gripped in the silence of Ilias, you wait for nasogastric suction or a freak convulsion back through the defect. Nothing comes. The sound of the inner ear is swilling its piss. Nothing snakes to you from above or from below, hauls me through a spastic lesion. Bound by fibrous stalks to the abdominal wall, mouth packed with scorched mesh, a deep sucking sound, one uninterrupted wave of lowing rings out through singing fluid. Distinct, measurable changes in interocular pressure. The muddy buzz of aborted calisalsis live at the flooded engine. Fucking drone music. I flick my eyes from left to right, from up to down in funereal purple. The bends. In the inner ear, a sparkler. Attempt to execute nested form events. Vitreous body humming in the orb of the eye. It's not possible to restore digestive propulsion. Your head is itself the intestinal obstruction you would seek to dislodge. You make a trampoline of the pelvic floor in vain. Callus and Cloquet is ever more severely strangulated. Reddening visibly, he yodels derogatory vagaries at your head with the voice of your mother and twists behind the pectineus. Sound of gargling in a burning vestry. The sharp upper edge of an emetic hailstorm breaking in her throat. He is obscured in fire. A blue flash. A sunrise blazing in the torso of the beloved. Clouds of erogenous slime boiling on the tongue. I can't open my eyes. Logjam screwed in a flat, imperious head. From behind the pectineus emerges the counter marmoset. Callus and Cloquet transfigured in a blue flash to a mannerist nightmare, projecting from the sacrum a ragged stick of spine. Behind you, everything telescopes. Intestinal loops drop in folds from the hamster wheel of intersusception, a sodden cloak of pastry. Over your shoulder, the face of the marmoset leers in flint and chorizo. Restitched, bigger now finally than your own face. A satellite dish of fur and lidless eyes flashing in a bonnet of hernias. A cartilaginous flap of halo spinning like a circular saw through treacle on a minced duvet of baying faces and sponge. An imploded, an imploded plash and play in a zero gravity abattoir. A sunset in the torso of the beloved like a black mouth. Look up through the gullet to where a crooked shred of light hovers beyond the ellipse of teeth and behind at the rolling e schematic bowel segment. Pierce my very entrails. You are the intersuscipians, exteriorized through a right rectus incision flooded with daylight. A glass eye on the gravel. You are the nutcracker at the rebirth of your own terminal fundoplication. Thank you.